Obviously, the Russian command on the left bank of the Dnipro near the villages of Krinky, Pitstepn and Pishinivka will for the time being have to fight with only a limited contingent, or rather part of the forces of the 7th Airborne Assault Division. After all, its other part the Russian command again brought into battle in the Tokmak direction. In order to prevent the expansion of wedging of the advanced units of the AFU into the first position of the main defense line near the village of Verbov. Over the past few days, the enemy managed to somewhat narrow the AFU bridgehead in the area of Krinky in the flank directions. Despite significant losses in weapons and military equipment in this direction from the fire of Ukrainian artillery and tactical attack drones of the AFU, the enemy's forward units are trying to constantly attack, acting mainly along the coastal road Olishki, Novokahovka, preventing the Ukrainian troops from expanding the bridgehead. West of the town of Olishki, along the Konka River, some developments are also taking place. It is still difficult to say exactly what, but by certain indications it seems that some small infantry groups of the AFU have managed to cross the river in this direction and are already west of the city. On this point it is worth noting. One can argue at length and with stubbornness on paper, about the operational expediency of the active actions of the AFU, in the rush across the Dnipro, especially in the context of the expenditure of human lives and resources. However, one thing is certain, the command of the Russian group of troops Dnieper at the moment is quite difficult. First of all, with regard to the distribution and use of its forces and means, in conditions when it has to act not against one but several Afu bridgeheads and areas at once. It just has to metaphorically speaking, rush from one to the other. It is quite difficult to create some kind of mobile reserve of the operational level, to simplify the performance of this task, or to maneuver freely with forces and means along the first position of its coastal defense line. Given the fire initiative of Ukrainian artillery in the operational tactical zone, as well as the proper level of intelligence of the AFU in this strip, the performance of such actions as the concentration and deployment of units and subdivisions entails certain costs. They have to operate from deep within the operational formation of the troops. This is unnecessary time and hassle, especially when any movement of your forces and means is immediately, almost instantly, detected by Ukrainian intelligence with a subsequent firing response. This situation is even worse when you have less than two tanks, two artillery barrels and four armored fighting vehicles per one kilometer of front. You have to concentrate them strategically, both in terms of place and time, to prevent simultaneous enemy activity in multiple locations, thereby exposing other areas and directions concurrently. Nothing will help the Russian command here, no newly appointed general will close a 250 km front with forces that are not available here and now. It is important to remember that logical on paper ideas, especially in the military context, live only until the appearance of practical results that contradict them.